Are you a businesswoman who is finding it challenging to get your ideas across and make a point? Welcome to Speakers Who Get Results with Elizabeth Bachman, a podcast dedicated to helping women get the visibility they want, whether making a speech or talking in a meeting. Every week, get valuable lessons from Elizabeth or learn from her roundtable conversations with experts and speakers on how to make a difference, not just a point. On to the show with your host, Elizabeth Bachman. Hello, and welcome to Speakers Who Get Results. This is the podcast where we talk about leadership, visibility, and how to use presentation skills to be heard and to move your listeners to take action. I don't care whether you're standing on a stage in front of a group, in a meeting, on a video call, or just in a one-on-one conversation, presentation skills are crucial. Before we begin, I want to invite you to see how you're doing with presentation skills by taking our free assessment at speakforresultsquiz.com. It's only four minutes long, and you can see where you are strong with your presentation skills and where you might need a little support. Today, I am so happy to have one of the people I wanted to interview from the very beginning, Kimmy Avery. Welcome, Kimmy. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here with you, Elizabeth. It's, you have just done such great work in the world, and I love being able to collaborate with you. Thank you. Kimmy and I collaborate often, actually, because she is an expert in gender communication and gender miscommunication, which is a big thing in our world. The official bio is that Kimmy Avery is a speaker, author, and coach who works with men and women who have challenges relating to each other both personally and professionally. She's been coaching for over 21 years and working with men and women to help them save their business and personal relationships since 2006. As a certified neurolinguistic programming master practitioner, Kimmy helps her ch- clients bridge the gap between our thoughts, be- language, and behavior to achieve greater success. She has a master's in coaching, a bachelor's in family studies and human development, which provide her with the foundation to help men and women navigate and create the harmony that they really want professionally. She is the creator of the Super Genius Teams program, which is why she's here today. She also has the Voraciously Curious two-day workshop, which I have gone to and learned so much. Kimmy's the best-selling author featured in the Grandmother Legacies book, and her upcoming book, Relationship Navigation, has been endorsed by John Gray of the Mars Venus book series. So Kimmy Avery, welcome to Speakers Who Get Results. It is wonderful to be here with you, Elizabeth. I am so glad we have managed to make this work. We've been talking about this for a while, and uh, just, yay, I got you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Before we dive into the gender communication part, I ask all my guests who their dream interview would be. Mm -hmm. If you were to interview somebody from history, who would it be? What would you ask them? And... Who should be listening? Oh, boy. For me, it's Mario Fortuny. So Mario Fortuny created the dome lighting system for opera and theater in Europe. He created silk pleated gowns that were the rage in the 1920s. He did block printing on silk velvet that is Mm. still being used and hung in palaces in Spain. And the man was uh, like an incredible genius. And he had rooms all over his house that were set up just for his projects. Ah, A workshop in every room. Yes. So you don't have to, have you ever started a project and you have to put it away before you pull it out again? No. Mm -hmm. He could just walk into a room and do his block printing and then say, oh, I want to tweak my photography or I want to tweak this gown and just walk into the next room and work on that. So it's like this amazing way to be inspired and use your creativity. And it just, mm. 
you know, he was, he was from Venice and the, the Fortuny Museum in Venice is one of my favorite places to go. When I was working there, that was, wasn't very far from the Teatro La Fenice and I could sort of go by on a lunch hour and just go in and feast my eyes on those amazing fabrics. Yes. It just, it, and, and when I was in Venice, I got to see it also. And it used to be the whole palace. And I went, by the time I was there, it was down to, I think, two big rooms. Mm -hmm. However, that just, my dream would be to have a big house where I could do all kinds of amazing projects. Oh, quite fun. Yeah. Well, we will definitely have a link to, uh, to Fortuny and some of the amazing photos in the show notes because I am a huge fan of Fortuny as well. I used to dream, said, oh, if I were slim and a movie star, I would have a Fortuny gown was always the thing to have. So uh, especially in the wow. 20s and 30s. Well, and, and the thing about those gowns, though, is they were made out of like five yards of fabric. So, and they were crush pleated. His way of doing it died with him. Nobody can do it the same way. Mm -hmm. And it molds to any body style. So it was one of those things that looked fabulous on any woman. Mm. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. What fun. Well, let's talk about what I've invited you here today is to talk about super genius teams. And uh, I have seen you do this presentation. So I'm going to pause for just a second while we pull up your slides. Yeah. And, and we are back with the brilliant Kimmy Avery talking to us about super genius teams. Kimmy, please take it away. Okay. I'm so passionate about this because Men and women are so different that we'd be better off if we actually spoke different languages because then we wouldn't think we were communicating. Oh, amen. Oh, we <laughs> yes. Have so many regular frustrations that can be solved simply by understanding each other. So that's what this workshop, this slide deck is all about is to help you to understand the people around you as well as yourself so you can have better communication more fun, more happiness, more joy, and all that good stuff. Because clearly the people who aren't speaking the way I think they're supposed to be thinking and the, or speaking, um, I just wish they would all speak like I do, but they're not going to. So help, help well, us. Like, why not? Oh my gosh, how come they're so strange, we think? Yeah, yes, yeah. indeed, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Please, <laughs> let's help, help us with this. Okay. So the learning objectives for what we're going to be covering today are number one, to identify your communication style. Number two, to understand how to navigate different communication styles. That's so critical. And number three is how to use the respect factor. Fabulous. Yeah. So before I even start, I invite you to take all your preconceived notions, because believe it or not, you have them, about men and women and how they should or shouldn't be or how they are or shouldn't be, right? Mm -hmm. And I want you to just allow yourself to be open and try on the things that you're going to hear today and see how it fits for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. What if no one is misbehaving? Amazing question, isn't it? No. Oh. What if no one is misbehaving? Everybody is working perfectly to get the results they get in their lives, and they're not trying to upset you, trying to ignore you, trying to hurt your feelings. What if nobody's misbehaving? All right, I'm holding on to the invitation to be open here because I have so many objections, but I'll, I'll be quiet and just try to stay open. Well, what's beautiful about that is that we all have objections that come up. So one thing when you're speaking is to point out the objections and handle them during the talk, right? Mm -hmm. As you know that. What if behind every behavior is a positive intention? It may not necessarily be positive for you, but what if it's positive for them 
And you could look for that instead of seeing them as wrong or misbehaving or deserving of punishment or deserving of being ignored or corrected. What if? Just think about that. There is no right way to communicate. Everybody has their own communication styles. And that's okay. And in fact, it would be weird if we were all the same. Yeah, good point. Okay. What we tend to do if a communication goes awry or we're frustrated by something, we either externalize the problem, something's wrong with them, that person, that situation, that organization, something's wrong with them. We externalize it. Or we say something's wrong with me Mm. and we internalize it. Now, the way this works with the masculine and feminine, and we'll be getting into this in a minute, is that the masculine energy typically sees things as wrong with people outside of them. And for instance, a work situation is not going the way you want it. Well, the organization is messed up or this is going wrong. Often the feminine internalizes it. We take it personally. Mm. Somebody is doing something the way we don't like it or we do something wrong. Something's wrong with me. We tend to internalize it. And now, of course, this is not across the board, but that challenge that we have with internally and external internalizing things and externalizing things can get us into big trouble. We all make assumptions. Absolutely. Ask yourself what un- unconscious assumptions are you making about the people around you, your partner, your manager, your coworkers, your subordinates, the government, like we can make all kinds of assumptions about everything. And the thing about assumptions is we're making it from our point of view. So we think we're like judging the situation based on what we know to be true. Now here's the deal. Everybody is doing that about you too. The people around you are making assumptions about you based on how you show up, about how you interact. Assumptions get us into big trouble. I'm a big fan of making one assumption, and that is that we don't know what somebody else is thinking. Ah. We don't know. We don't know what their motivation is. We don't know what's happening for them. So we want to be curious instead. So here's the deal. More deals. (laughs) I like that word. I... Our, your viewpoint is yours. The reality, a reality can be so complex that equally valid observations from differing perspectives can appear to be contradictory. And we have, for those of you who are on the audio version, we have a slide up here where um, they're pointing to some bars on, that could, it could be four of them, it could be three of them. And one person says four and the other person says three, but it could be either. It could be either. And depending on literally where you are in a room, where you are in a situation, things will look different to you. And that's okay. It doesn't make one person right and the other person wrong. Neither viewpoint is right or wrong. And that's really important to know because then you can choose how to interact instead of defaulting into frustration or anger or upset. So what impacts your communication style? Oh, I think about that as what impacts my communication style has a lot to do with who I'm with. If I'm with a group of women, that's one thing. If I'm in a business situation, it's different. If I'm with a group of men, it's different. If I'm with my sisters, it's something else entirely. Yeah. And I notice, for instance, I've got two strong men in my life, my father and my husband. And when they have disagreements, I call myself the monkey in the middle because they go through me and I'm like, 
I need you two to work it out between yourselves. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. And so our environment and the people around us will impact how we communicate. Mm -hmm. Now, as a foundation, I want to talk about the difference between stereotypes and archetypes. A stereotype pigeonholes somebody into one idea. Mm -hmm. An archetype is a universal concept that people understand around the world, like mother or father. We understand that. Man, woman is so varied, we can put them into an, a stereotype. Mm -hmm. And that can be uncomfortable. People don't like being stereotyped. Sex and gender are not the same. This is really important because yes. our biological sex is, can be the same or different than the gender we feel. Mm -hmm. right. And so with that said, there are women who are in masculine mode. There are men who are in feminine mode. There are all kinds of variations, probably as many variations on the planet as there are stars in the sky. Mm-hmm. And again, instead of making the assumption that, oh, this person's in this body, they must be like this, or this person dresses like that, so they may, must be like that, we want to understand that assumptions get us into trouble, and we want to make that one assumption, what is it? Uh, to be that there, that there is no right way to communicate. Right. And that we don't know what anybody's thinking. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we all suffer from stuck in your own head syndrome. Oh, yeah. We all suffer from that. And that's because through our eyes, we're looking at the world through our beliefs, our values, our cultural experience, our identities. We're looking at the world through that. And because we're looking through, it at that, as the, through that lens, we're seeing and assuming that everybody's like us. Mm -hmm. And of course, that gets us into big trouble. I call it CEOs for short. S-I-Y-O-H-S. S-I-Y-O-H-S. CEOs. Stuck mm -hmm. in your own head syndrome. And we sort through our experience to make sense of it at, through having our perspective, which helps us navigate the world. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't help us have deeper connected relationships sometimes. It helps it destroy them if we're not careful. So the antidote to CEOs or stuck in your own head syndrome is curiosity. Ah, I like and that. And if we add the word curiosity in front of a sentence. It literally changes our physiology to be open. As so in, I'm curious, what did you mean by that? Exactly. Instead of saying, what do you mean by that? It can, our tone of voice can be a little abrupt. It can be sort of a little challenging for the other person, but just softening it by saying, hey, I'm curious. You said this. I'm curious what you meant by that. I love it. Okay. And it changes your physiology. I love the word curious. That's why I have a workshop called Voraciously Curious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to go into the mo models of being. There's the relational, which is the traditional feminine model. Then there, you've got the individualist, that is the traditional male model. We're gonna go into detail into the, in this. So imagine there's a yin yang symbol. And on the one side, you've got the uh, feminine who is the supporter, adapter, enhancer mm -hmm. of the world. And on the other side, you've got the masculine, which is the provider, protector, producer energy. They are two sides of the same coin. And uh, since this is a yin-yang symbol on my screen, it's, if you don't know what a yin-yang symbol is, imagine a circle that has sort of two semicolons together. Mm -hmm. 
and they complement each other. Within each one, there's a little bit of the other one. Right. And we will absolutely have that in the show notes. Yes, that would be super helpful. So every person has masculine and feminine within them. Mm -hmm. And every relationship dynamic has masculine and feminine within that. And those dynamics can change depending on context. Right. So I know a couple who she's in charge in the kitchen and he's in charge in the garden. Mm -hmm. They both, So each one of them is in masculine protector mode for that particular space. Every couple is different. And this goes for same sex couples or heterosexual couples and at the workplace. It really does apply to every relationship experience. Individualists and relationals together combined to make super genius teams. And where's, here's where I, 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 this really makes me think about a lot of the work I do is with women who are at high levels in their, in their careers, but still aren't being listened to. And sometimes it's because they're too pushy, too much in masculine mode and people don't want to accept that. Or maybe they're more in feminine mode and the people in masculine mode have a hard time dealing with it. I actually like to think of it as single focused versus multi-focused because there are certain many times if I'm focused on getting a project done, uh, please do not interrupt me. Let me focus. And whereas uh, other times I can be in the supporter and helper ro- mode you know, on and off during the day. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I notice when I'm speaking, I go out into the world and I am single focused on my audience, what I'm doing, pre- presenting, connecting, all of that. And when I get home, I need to transition into being feminine at home mm-hmm. instead of producing a result by being at a workshop. Right, right. right? So whoever is in the masculine or individualistic mode will need a transition into new spaces, whether from work to home um, and working on a project to being in a meeting. They'll take the transition throughout their day, wherever they need it to get to the next single focus result. And actually, I just, it just occurs to me that the other side of that is when you've been in relational mode and say you're getting everything ready in the morning and you're organizing this and, and, uh, and, and then you have to go to work and focus. And it's harder nowadays that we're working from home. You have to move from the multi-focused person in, who's making breakfast to the single focus person who needs to sit at the computer and churn out that report. Yes. I worked in a, at a work situation where I was expected to be single focused. However, I had so many tasks and experiences that I needed to complete that single focus was just about impossible. And part of that had to do with my placement in the office. I was by the front door, so people would knock on the door, interrupting any attempt that I had at focus, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we can have all kinds of challenges to that single focus, whether it's working from home during our experience right now, or it can have to do with maybe your natural tendency is to multitask. Mm -hmm. So you get distracted easily. You get called by the people around you, whether they're knocking on your door, ringing you on the phone, texting you. Mm -hmm. There's interruptions happening that disturbs the single focus. Well, it's, or for that matter, whether you just have, do you have one project open on your computer or do you have multiple windows and, 
you know, and LinkedIn pops in and <laughs> Facebook pops in and back and forth. Yes, I, I really have to work to keep myself focused when I have many windows open on the computer. Absolutely, right? And my husband will do things like he'll look at my computer and he'll say, why don't you close all those windows? And I'm like, if I closed those windows, I would get nothing done because I wouldn't remember what I needed to work on. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And for me, I'm saying, why can't you do more than one thing at once? Well, because we know this stuff, we can talk ourselves down from being upset. But have you been in situations where those types of things have frustrated you, irritated you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Making it so you're not on your best game, right? So tell us some of the of the qualities of uh, how you know how to tell. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna dive into that. So, what's your predominant style? So, I'm gonna uh-huh. go through some some examples, and I want you as the listener to think: Do I do that? Do I not do that? Just sort of listen to it and get a sense of where you fit with each one of these. And at this point, actually, beloved listeners, I am going to invite you to get a piece of paper or, be, or go back. If you're just listening, if you're driving or something, go back and watch this because you're going to want to look at these lists of qualities. Uh, this is going to be one you're going you're gonna to want to check the video on this and then take notes. This is important. Yeah. This is super important. It'll make such a difference in your life. Mm-hmm. Do you emphasize connection and interdependence? Mm -hmm. Or do you emphasize status? I know my place. They should know their place. And independence. Mm -hmm. Do you share information easily and effortlessly? You want to connect with people. You share, share, share. Or... Do you give information only as you need it, only as somebody else needs it, only as what you think somebody else needs? Mm -hmm. Do you do many things at once? Or do you like to do one thing at a time? Do one thing and then another thing. Do you have a web thinking, sort of this organic system that integrates ideas? One of my favorite teachers likes to say, connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. Are you somebody who connects dots? Or are you sequential, linear, single focus, and compartmentalizing things? Are you somebody who strives for perfection? Or are you results-oriented? Are you relationship-oriented? meaning you relate to the people around you or do you do your part and let others do theirs? You don't Mm -hmm. want to step on any toes. You just do the thing you're supposed to do or do you do whatever needs to be done? Or are you into competition and winning or do you need to feel included or does that just not matter to you at all? Inclusion is just something that doesn't even enter your radar. Now that you've got the list, you've sort of listened to those ideas, let's look at where that you fall in that. A relational person, this is more feminine style, emphasizes connection and interdependence. We share information. We share with the world, unless we don't trust somebody. But often, we will share things that people don't want us to share, Mm -hmm. because we like to share information. My husband divorced his first wife because she told everybody everything. He couldn't protect the family because she was revealing everything. Are you somebody who shares information or do you conceal more? Mm -hmm. Again, remember, neither is right and wrong. 
Do you have that web thinking? You're connecting dots, this sort of organic system, integrating ideas. Do you strive for perfection? Relationship oriented. You do whatever needs to be done. I had a job where I was supposed to focus on one thing and I kept being told, stay in my lane. Well, I'm used to doing everything for my business. And delegating, I've had to learn to delegate. But staying in my lane was not an innate trait. It was something I had to learn. Right? Mm -hmm. Have you been told to stay in your lane? Have you been told to focus on just your job, not somebody else's? Do you need to feel included? If so, if you answered yes to some of those or all of them, you might be or likely are more relational in nature. And that would, I would put you in the feminine category. Now that may be again in a particular situation and then in another situation, you're more individualistic. So now let's go over those traits. Emphasizes status and independence. Right. And they, what's so interesting about this is if you're a woman working in a man's organization, you might find that the people around you value your independence and they think that you've got it under control. So they're not going to offer help necessarily right away because they think you've got it under control. They won't offer it unless you ask. Mm, okay. That's interesting. All because right. they're valuing their independence and yours. Mm hmm They'll give information as needed. They're not going to tell you everything that's going through their head. They're not going to tell you what color dress that somebody wore as they're doing the business meeting. They're not. It's irrelevant. They do one thing at a time. Single focus. Mm -hmm. Single focus. Most women have a very hard time really getting what single focus means to a man. I used to walk through my husband's store in the back office where they were, were, were repairing computers. And I would say something sort of like, hi guys. And like not a single head would turn. Mm. I was watching for the little ears to move or something. They were all focused on doing their repair work. That's how the masculine operates. They may actually hear you, but they're not going to respond because they're focused on something. Mm -hmm. That can make a woman, somebody in relational mode, feel like that person doesn't care, doesn't like them, doesn't value them, thinks they're intruding. That's the something's wrong with me That's assumption. That's something wrong with me, right? Mm-hmm. So the masculine is also, the individualistic masculine mm -hmm. is sequential, linear thinker, compartmentalizing, one thing after another. When a man is walking around the office between one project and the next, he looks like he's available. So let's have a conversation. And have you ever had the experience of him not remembering a single word you said? Mm -hmm. yes. That's because he's transitioning into the next single focus. Ah, yes, right. And then we get upset. We as women. We, uh, we as women, relationals, yeah. we start to take ourselves out because we don't feel included. We feel ignored. So men who are walking, who are walking through the office or, or through the house for that matter, and uh, from one task to another, is it possible if you're individualistic, if you're focused, single focused, is it possible to get yourself to remind yourself to acknowledge the multifocused people? Yes, it is possible. The multifocused person probably will need to say, let's say it's um, at work. Mm -hmm. I really value working here. And there's something that I need that I don't think you know about. Mm -hmm. When I say hi to you, 
it really makes me feel happy and, and like I belong here if you say hi back to me. That would make, it would make my day if you did that. And I would just relax and be able to focus on what I need to get done. Is there anything you need for me to make that happen? Mm -hmm. And he might say, be gentle with me. I've got to learn how to do that. Okay. Right? But think so, how much better the, the working relationship is going to be if you actually knew that about each other. Right. Great. Okay. And one of the challenges with, with uh, women in the workplace, especially in the STEM fields, which is where I focus, is that they need all these things. They don't know how to ask for them. And the men in their environment don't know what the women need. So they don't know how to actually help the women to feel welcomed. Mm -hmm. So just saying, it would make me super happy if you said hi to me when I say hi to you. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. make me feel included. And he'll be like, okay, if inclusion is important to you, awesome. There is a reason why a lot of programs integrating women into the workplace are called diversity and inclusion. Ah, yes. It's a word that we need as women. Men, yes. not so much. Yes, right. The relational types need that acknowledgement and inclusion. And if you're not getting it, it's not necessarily personal. It might just be that the people around you are focused on the task. Yeah. That's huge. Well, it's huge. And I'm going to tell you a funny little story. I like to come home and have, at nighttime and have the front door light on. It took me 10 years before I asked my husband to start turning on the light because it didn't occur to me and I was irritated, but I didn't even think about it. Now I teach this stuff, okay, uh -huh. which I think is amusing. So I said, honey, I need this to happen. Is there anything you need for me to make that happen? And he said, well, just let me know when you're coming home. Okay, so I did that. Well, he found a better solution. He installed a motion sensor, sensor light. So mm -hmm. anytime I walk up to the front door, if it's dark, the light comes on. But he wouldn't have done it if he didn't know that it was something I needed. Mm -hmm. And that right. happens all the time. We need things that we don't express clearly and the people in our lives don't know what those are. And then we take ourselves out of the game. We're and like, then well, we're I'm unhappy, go find a and they're job. unhappy, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay, so done is better than perfect. Mm -hmm. One of my coaches says, ready, fire, aim. Not ready, aim, fire. Mm -hmm. Why? Because once you go the first round, you can refine it. Mm -hmm. But if you never get the first round done... Nothing's going to happen. Right, exactly. What's going to get you the result? What's going to get you the result? Done is mm -hmm. better than perfect. Results oriented. Get that result. Mm -hmm. Do your part and let others do theirs. Mm -hmm. It's actually a sign of respect. So when you're moving through your world and you need help carrying a box, the person who's standing there who's watching you struggle with the door, thinks, I don't want to intrude. I want her to feel like she can do what she needs to do. And she's sitting there fuming because he hasn't opened the door for her because she's got all her hands full. If she just said, hey, can you help me? He would show up and help out. Mm -hmm. We don't okay. give quality information. Okay. And then competition and winning. The masculine, individualistic, man, they want their points. Mm -hmm. Right? You just have to look at sports games. The points, the points, the points, the points. Winning. Mm -hmm. Women often will go, oh, we can just play to have fun. They're like, what's the point in that? <laughs> right? I understand that. As, as someone who grew up in a very competitive, with a group of competitive athletes, but it didn't work for me. So I would go into dance where there wasn't a winner and a loser. Right. Whereas 
my mother and my and my father and I are like that. But my mother and my sisters, winning really matters. Yeah. And so, okay. Edit editors, we had a little verbal here, so I'm okay. gonna t- I'm gonna tell my story because. I get that about the competition and the winning thing as, you know, my father and I uh, are both people who would prefer to exercise in a way that doesn't involve beating somebody. (laughs) Whereas my mother and both my sisters, they really like to win, really matters to them. And it's an interesting, took me years to learn to be okay with my way of doing, say, dance or walking rather than playing a game. Right. And what's so great about the story you just told is it's the women in your life who are competition, into competition and winning. Mm-hmm. It's not the men. Mm-hmm. So, again, that's a great example of how it can go either way. Your gender, your sex does not equate with you necessarily being relational or indiv- individualistic. Great. I love this. So, how, so t- yes, tell us how we can give us an example. Okay. So, Super Helper. One of my clients at Shell Oil, she was working as an engineer and helping everybody. She was such a wonderful helper. And in that, she never was getting her own work done. She was overextended. She wanted to date outside of work. She couldn't even do that. She wasn't taking care of herself. She was exhausted. So with a little guidance, we focused her on becoming the referral helper, which meant somebody would come ask her for something and she'd say, oh, so-and-so is the, really the key person you should talk to about that. She would redirect people. She could be helpful, which is so much fun if you're a helper. Mm-hmm. You like to help other people. And she could direct people to people who could help them better without taking her time away from her work, which meant she was getting more of her work done. Her um, evaluations came back much more high than they were before. They were, you know, higher level. They were much more respectful toward her. And nobody was upset. Isn't that amazing? Wonderful. Great. it's easy to start redirecting people in a way that makes you feel good and makes the people around you feel good so that you can actually get your own work done. Great. Great. So now let's talking about speaking. Are you more relational or individualistic in your speaking style? Here are some examples of speaking styles. Do you speak in connections? connecting the dots everywhere? Or do you always do a one-up status with people? Do you talk to build connection, rapport talk? Or do you report the facts? Right. Are you indirect or are you direct? Mm -hmm. Are you detail-oriented or do you speak in bullet points? Do you have to give the background story to everything or background story is irrelevant to you? Do you prefer talking face to face with people or do you prefer side by side? Are you the kind of person who cheers somebody on? You're the angel's advocate or do you like to pick things apart and be the devil's advocate? Mm -hmm. Okay. When we look at those speaking styles, again, they break into the different departments, more relational versus individualistic. So the individualistics, those are the ones who report and are direct, right? Yes. Bullet points. They love bullet points. Mm -hmm. With like, I remember when I was a teenager, my cousin would come over to the boarding school I was at. He was at the boys' school. I was at the girls' school. And he would come over and he'd say, I'd be talking about my day and he'd say, so your point is, Uh and what you're telling me is, I didn't even know any of this, but I was speaking in the relational style. I was building rapport. I was being indirect. I was Mm -hmm. giving all the details, all the background story. Donald, 
could care less about that. He just wanted the report. And here's a point that this is something that I hear a lot where I have, um, where men will say, oh, I'm so, inf- I'm so frustrated with my colleague because she never gets to the point. And the, f- the women I know will say, he never wants to hear the details, but it's the styles. And the reason why it matters is because in business, time is money. Yeah. So indeed, the individualistic bullet points direct thing does get you through the information faster. Yes. And there's kind of an instinctual need for relational people to build that rapport. If you imagine a group of women back in the caveman days walking through a meadow, they chatter, they tell stories. And if somebody's upset, they want to know that they work with people around them. And if you're not part of that group, you could be tiger food. Yes. Right? Yeah. So it's, and the details are super important to us. If I'm picking berries, I want to know that I'm not going to pick the poisonous one. Right. So we think that when we're giving information, we want to give all the details. Mm -hmm. Everything, the background story matters to us but it doesn't necessarily matter to him. Took me years to learn that one. Yes. Yeah. Or whoever is in provider, protector, producer mode. And this would be a good point for me to mention. I have a, a client, Nancy, who had to give a report to her new, a new C level person had come in a woman and the other women who around her, it was a mostly female teams speaking to this new female uh, chief of sales. And they, they expected the chief of sales to want to know details and be chatty. And the chief of sales kept saying, give me the numbers. What's it about? Whatever. And she was very much in masculine mode. And so my client, Nancy, and I, we went through and we we created her presentation to appeal to someone who is in masculine mode and, or individualistic mode, if you will, and also why she was not being friendly and chatty and whatever. Well, she was brand new. She was the first female chief of sales that this company ever had. They're infamous for being very male dominated. And so she had to get up to speed very fast And she had to put on the masculine, quote unquote, mode in order to deliver the results that she was being required to deliver. So when Nancy realized that and realized that it wasn't personal, then uh, she's now, the chief of sales now thinks that Nancy's the best department head she's ever worked with because Nancy's the person who gave her what she needed, didn't waste her time, and... uh, and, you know, was being there to be supportive. And that is part of what I learned from Kimmy. So thank you very much for this. Yeah, my pleasure. And, and it's just, it's once we get, we tweak these details, it make, it's, it's sort of like the, the epiphany comes out and you have this sense of peace. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh my God, she doesn't hate me. She's not mad at me or he's not upset with me. <sighs> Yes. We can relate. It's really powerful. So what about listening? Okay. So let's dive into listening. Are you more relational or individualistic in listening? Okay. What do you need from me? What does this have to do with me? Do you prefer face to face? Are you an angel's advocate? Or are you looking for what's the point? What's the problem and how can I fix it? Mm -hmm. Do you prefer side by side? Are you a devil's advocate? You're trying to pick apart that problem so that that person can succeed. But let's say you're doing that to a woman who has a brand new baby idea and she brings it to you for your guidance and you pick it apart and then you never hear about it again. You're wondering what happened? Why isn't she talking about that? Well, you might find that you actually deflated her creative idea accidentally 
by trying to help her. Mm -hmm. And so the opposite could happen with an angel's advocate. A man talks to a woman about an idea. She says, oh, that's great. I love it. She's building you up. And he's like, well, I didn't get any quality information in that. Mm -hmm. Where's the juice? Where's the actionable items? Mm -hmm. And he might have preferred to have somebody help him pick it apart to find out what needs to be fine-tuned. Mm -hmm. So if we can know what we're doing in those situations, we can plan for them. That's great. Can you talk a little bit about, I know you, so, so the difference between the re relational and the individualistic, uh, it's not here on the slide, but it, it is very clear to what you're saying. Um, ah, thank you. Here we go. Uh, talk a little bit about the difference between face-to-face -face and side-by-side. -side. Ah. So when they've studied little boys and little girls, about five years old, little boys play side-by-side. They talk to each other, they chat at each other, but it's sort of about things. It's not necessarily, it's not about the relationship. In fact, I was just on the phone with a coaching client, man, who said, oh my God, my wife and I have the best conversations when I'm driving. Mm -hmm. Because they're side by side. Mm -hmm. Little girls sit face to face. We make eye contact. We love it. It makes us feel loved. It feels great. Mm -hmm. And so we expect our, the men in our life to make eye contact with us. And when they don't, we're like, come on, eye contact. Mm -hmm. Right? I've never done that, of course. Oh, yeah. That's so naturally, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, Kimmy, what is the respect factor and how can we use all this information? And uh, granted, okay. I know that this is just the tip of the iceberg of... Yes all that there's so much that you know. Uh, so I encourage everybody to learn more about Kimmy Avery and her super genius teams. Talk to us about the respect factor and how we can actually use this. Oh, so the respect factor is critical. This is when you ask for a time to talk. Mm. Knowing that you're always interrupting the individualistic masculine person. Why? Because they're single focused. And if you're talking to a relational person who has multitasking, if you ask them for a time to talk, they can focus on you if you need it. Sometimes mm -hmm. men will get upset because their partner is doing all these things while she's talking to them or while she's listening to him. And he's like, She's not paying attention. She's not single focused on me. You can ask for that. Mm, okay. So the respect factor is asking for that time to talk. Let me go to the next slide. So ask for a time to meet or talk. You might say something like, excuse me for interrupting. I need your attention regarding this topic or about this particular thing. I need this many minutes. I need five minutes. I need one minute. I need a minute to just unpack because I'm so pissed or upset. Mm -hmm. Or I have a problem I need help with. Whatever it is, you want to just let them know up front and then say, when would be a good time to talk? And then here's the critical piece. Oh my God, this is so important. If the ladies on this call could get this. Wait until talk time comes. Mm. Men won't trust you if you just keep di ask for that time to talk and then just dive into it. Mm -hmm. Now they may say, sure, I can talk right now. And drop everything and focus on you. A lot of times that doesn't happen. Like the wife who texts her husband all day long wanting to have conversations and he's focused on something. And then she's upset because he's not paying attention to her. Mm -hmm. If she understands that she's always interrupting the masculine energy, she can ask for that time to talk. And then a single focused human being is focused on you. And it's awesome. Yeah. Well, okay. and, and if you are a relational person and you're trying to respond to every single interruption, like you said, when at your office where you were at the front desk, at the, yes. the front door, 
yeah, how, how could you possibly be focused on what you're trying to do if you are trying, indeed trying to answer everybody? Yeah, it's impossible. And so we need the people in our lives to understand that we're focused on a project. Mm -hmm. So even at home, when I'm doing my videos or I'm doing work with my clients, because I work from home, my husband knows that I'm in single focus mode because I'm present, I'm here. He can't interrupt me during that time. Mm -hmm. If I'm making dinner, no big deal. Mm -hmm. Depends on the context. Okay. So you wait until talk time comes. Okay, you were going to say something. I'd- no, I'm just going to say this is this is so important and so useful. Um, uh, you had you told me some story about a, a woman asking for a raise. Oh yes. So here's I'll put I'll put the respect factor into context with this story. It's so powerful. She had been working with Shell for 15 years, and she had had to fight for every raise she got. And if you think about it, she was in Africa at first, and then I met her in New Orleans when she was at that office there. So there's more of a male-dominated world over there. So can you imagine even fighting even harder to get those raises, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So she's in this course with me and she wants to ask her boss for a raise. She got clear on what she wanted. She wanted to work with the younger engineers because she had that skill set. She loves empowering people. In fact, adorable. She would walk through the office and saying good morning to everybody first thing and just checking in with people. That's how relationals operate. Mm -hmm. Really nice. And um, I suppose The masculine might not think that's so nice, but I did. Anyway. (laughs) Yes. So she would, she asked for, she got clear on what she needed. Mm -hmm. I've got this skill set. I need a raise. And so she set a time to talk with her manager. And she waited until talk time came. She didn't have the conversation in the hallway. She didn't do it when he was having, doing something else. She waited till the meeting came. And then she said, I, I really appreciate who you are, what you do. I love the way you manage the team. I love how you pay attention to me when I ask for your time. It makes me feel really happy. So she expressed some appreciation to him. Mm -hmm. Then she said, there's something that I need that I don't think you know about. I need to be expanding my, my working experience. And I really love to cultivate young engineers Mm -hmm. and I've been at Shell for 15 years and I'd like a raise at the same time. Mm -hmm. What that would provide me is a sense of feeling like I'm a part of the company, like I'm contributing to Shell. It would be a win-win for us. And what do you need from me to make that happen? Uh And her manager, Klaus, was shocked. He dropped his jaw, literally He was floored because nobody had ever come in to ask for a raise in that way. He set all of his energy in motion to make that happen for her. And she had the raise and the new position within two weeks. Great. Wow. And that's what happens. He was floored because everybody comes in, they're fighting ready for, you know, I need the raise. I deserve it. Mm -hmm. She made him her partner in the experience. She expressed her trust in him and that helped him to feel like, wow, how can I elevate this woman? Mm -hmm. It's a win-win. That's excellent. That's amazing. Kimmy Avery, how can we find out more? Because clearly this is just the tiniest tip of the iceberg. Okay. So you can find out more by emailing me at kimmyavery at gmail.com. And it's K-I-M-I-A, V as in Victor, A as in Apple, R-Y at Mm -hmm. gmail.com. Or you can go to my website, supergeniusteams.com. Or go to, if you want to speak with me about your situation, whether it's personally or professionally, you can go to kimmyavery.com slash S-G-T. 
for super genius teams, for super right? Super genius teams, exactly. Okay. Kimmy Avery, thank you so much for being on Speakers Who Get Results. This is so important. I've learned so much from Kimmy. I really wanted to be able to share this with you. It's incredibly important in, in work, in life, anytime you have individual individualistic people and relational people together, which is most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time. Thank you so much for being part of Super Genius Teams. And ladies and gentlemen, dear readers, dear listeners, anybody who's paying attention to this, please find out, go to our show notes. You'll get all this information here. And this is Elizabeth Bachman. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you. We have just concluded another great episode of Speakers Who Get Results with your host, Elizabeth Bachman. If you got value from today's episode, please feel free to share us with your friends and colleagues. You may also visit elizabethbachman.com for additional resources. Be sure to tune in every week for new episodes. And thanks for tuning in.